Hey everybody, the Reeswirl here, and welcome back to more Steinsgate. Okay, I know I left this in the middle of like a intense moment purely because my internet decided to shit the bed. But I don't know, I don't even know if my internet did shit the bed. Oh no it did, it, it disconnected, I remember. Oh well, it's no matter. Right, so, I know we're being chased. We're basically stuck in the, uh, the death loop. And we have been for like four cycles at this point. Oh, is it three cycles? I can't remember how many it's been. Either way. I was gonna say, this seems quieter than normal. Alright. So. Wary of surrounding eyes, I scout the streets and decide that the back alleys of Kandem Yojin will give us the best chance of, of avoiding detection. Once we make it to the station, we'll just have to pray. I race back to the spot I left Mayori. Oh god. She's not there. For an instant, I think I got the place mixed up, so I check the entrance of the next building. But Mayori isn't there, either. She's gone. At first, I assume Mayori just wandered off somewhere, like she often does. But then another possibility dawns on me. Could Cern's men have found her? Abducted her? Would they do that? I don't think so. Every single time Mayori's been involved, they haven't really given a shit about kidnapping or abducting her, they just kill her. So Moika said that Mayori was unnecessary. That's why she killed Mayori first. She also killed Mayori as like a warning. If you don't cooperate, this will happen to you. So why would they kidnap her? I don't know. The only thing I know is that Mayori's gone. I knew I shouldn't have left her alone. I should have stayed by her side no matter what. Still, I can't give up. I scour the neighbourhood for Mayori. But when I fail to find any trace of her, I return to the lab in despair. You got new mail! Okay, bear. Shining. Oh! Oh god. It's a mail from Moeka. We need to talk. Heading over now, okay? Moeka. She's on her way here? When she says we need to talk, she probably means I'm going to kidnap you and take the time leap machine. Just as I'm about to delete the mail out of frustration, I notice there's an image attached. I swallow and open it. Uh-oh. Is it Mayori? Huh? Wait, what? It's a scan of a foreign newspaper article. There's a rough black and white picture along with a date. February 28th, 1961. Fifty years ago. It's not in English. I look at the picture. Jellyman! The picture is of a jellyman embedded in the wall of a house. Wait. Wait. It's not... Oh god, it is. It's Mayori. Oh god! This didn't happen in the anime. <laughs> Mayori. <laughs> and back we go again. Oh my. The screeching fills my ears. Needless... Need... Oh, not needless. Needles stab into my brain. The shock lasts an instant, then the pain is gone. So basically they did. Wait. They have access to a time machine then. I'm confused. Yeah, a wave of nausea hits me. Vomit backflows into my mouth. I swallow it back and my throat burns. I leapt immediately after seeing the photo. I couldn't accept it, not even for a second. In the 20 minutes I took my eyes off my Ori. Oh, I off of my Ori. She was captured by Moika's men. They took her to France and stuck her in the LHC. They sent her through their unstable black hole 50 years into the past. It wasn't an experiment. It was just a warning. A threat. How could anyone do such a thing? Now that I've recovered slightly from the shock, I realise that Mayori was probably still alive when Moka sent me that picture. A flight to France takes at least 12 hours, after all. Even so, her fate was already decided. Perhaps that 50-year-old newspaper article appeared out of thin air the instant they found her. I don't know why her cause of death changed. I don't have time to investigate. The only choice is to run. Our enemies don't consider Mayori human. 
I'm filled with rage. I want to kill them. I won't let them have her. The clock shows 5.05pm. Not as much time left as I thought. Come to think of it, the time leap machine should be able to send me back to noon at least. I'll do that next time. The chill runs up my spine. What am I thinking? Next time? Have I already given up on saving her this time? I shake my head to clear the air of negative thoughts. Judging by the time, Mayori's already left the shrine. So I can't contact her until she gets back to the lab. All I can do is wait. Hmm. As before, the Bronto workshop closes early. Mayori appears as Suzuha and Mr. Bron are leaving. We run through Kando Myojin's back streets to... Is that Ochano? Ochano Mizu Station. Taking only minimal pre precautions to avoid attracting, attracting attention. We have to get there before the Sobu line shuts down. We manage to make it to the station without being stopped, but when we get there, I see a group of men waiting by the entrance. They look like CERN. Change of plans. We turn around and head for the... for the Shin Ochanomizu subway station. Oh boy. Oh god, it's this one. Oh no. We arrive at the station later than intended. I don't usually come here, so I got lost. I stand nervously at the platform clock. According to the scrolling display, the Yamanote, Kaihin, Tohoku, and Sobu lines have already suspended operations. Wait, it looks like the Chiyoda line has too. It must be protocol to assume that nearby stations may be threatened, even stations on unconnected lines. Damn! Mayori hasn't said a word about my strange behaviour. This is the third time I've led her on this escape, but each time she, she follows me without complaint. Does she really trust me that much? Maybe she can feel my desperation. That's why I want so badly to save her. We've been together for more than a decade. She's like a little sister to me. I'll leap as many times as it takes. Mayuri tilts her head quizzically. I realize that I'm staring at her. Poor thing. Mayori smiles happily at that answer. That's right. While we wait for the train, I should ask Mayori about her whereabouts today. If. If I have to leap again, I'll need all the information I can get. Starbucks. So that's where she was. Just then, an announcement plays over the PA system. The subway is resuming normal operations. About 20 minutes have passed since we arrived. I didn't expect to be stuck here that long, but it's okay. Right now, Mawika should be in Akihabara, heading to the lab. Everything is going to be alright. While waiting for the train, I examined the route map on the station's notice board. We can transfer to an overland train at Yayogi... Uihara? It'll take a while, but that will take us all the way to Odawara. Another announcement, our train is arriving. I can hear the rumbling and see the lights at the end of the tunnel. Mayori and I are standing just behind the white line. I reach for her hand, meaning to make a dash for the train when the doors open, but I guess there's no hurry now. I let my hand fall to my side, empty. The rock runs closer. Mayori is saying something. I can't quite hear her over the train. Oh no! Fuck! Oh, I hope this isn't super graphic. Suddenly, Mayori disappears. Okay, it's not super graphic. Thank fuck. There she is, leaning out over the tracks. She's off balance as if she stumbled, or someone pushed her. She seems to hang there for a moment, and then the train comes screaming into the station. Oh, God! I hear a sound from under the train. I can't describe it, but it makes me instantly nauseous.
I don't know if it'll explain what happened. Essentially, while we were waiting, Nai appeared in the station, saw Mayori, ran to, I guess, hug her, tripped, and then in instead of hugging, she pushed her. I mean, I'm going off of what happens in the anime, so I don't know if that's actually the same with this. Probably is, though. Sparks fly as the train slams on its brakes. The people on the platform scream. I turn to where Mayori was just a moment ago. There stands a familiar girl. Tiny, adorable, a cute black rabbit pouch slung over her shoulder. Tinuji Nai. Oh god. She looks up at me. Her eyes are wide. Her lips tremble. Oh god. I don't like this imagery. Yep. You did surprise her. You pushed her into a train. She stares at me for a few more seconds as if waiting for me to say something, then turns and runs away. The platform is in chaos. The PA informs us that there's been a personal injury accident. Naya's already gone. I don't go after her. Instead, I peek timidly through the gap between the train, oh god, and the platform. One side of the track is a wash of red. Ugh. My mind is blank. I can't think. I don't even remember how I got back to the lab. Moika's group should have come and gone, but the time leap machine is still here. I guess I should be grateful. It takes longer than usual to set up the machine. For some reason, I have trouble recalling my own phone number. At last, it's ready. Now, take me back. Oh. See, this is where I really start to feel sorry for Okabe. He has to relive this so many times that he's no doubt going to become desensitized to it. The leap occurs instantaneously. Taito claimed that his time machine takes one hour of subjective time to travel ten years. I don't know if ours has the same behaviour, but now is not the time to find out. Ten years. I have no business that far back. Besides, according to Kurisu, time limping too far into the past could cause, cause mental disorders due to the gap between personality and memory. <laughs> Mayori is singing her chicken song, though she's actually eating pre-cooked chicken from the convenience store instead of her usual juicy chicken number one. She had to switch because she can't warm up frozen chicken in the microwave which is now a dedicated part of the time loop machine. I was right to come back five hours. Mayori is still in the lab. But what the hell happened back there? It hurts, but I forced myself to recall that horrifying scene. Why would you want to? Mayori died again. This time it happened at Shin Achinomizu Station, a place completely unrelated to the lab or the bomb threat. Tanuji and I pushed her onto the tracks where the train tore her to shreds. Couldn't I be working for Zen too? No, no. That can't be right. Nai has a habit of jumping on Mayori and greeting. She was probably just being her usual affection itself. But why did she choose that precise moment? I don't know. I sense malice. Who's malice? It's like fate is playing a cruel joke on us. Whatever the case, all that matters now is that I have another chance. I need to act. I have the power to save Mayori. I will do whatever it takes to find a way. Oh boy. This time... Oh god, the worst part is, because I've seen the show, I know exactly how these end. This time we hail a taxi at Chuodori. It'll be expensive, but that hardly matters now. Mayori comes along quietly. I consider taking her home to Akibakuro, but Morika's group might be watching her house. I have no idea where they are at this point in time. Instead, I ask the driver to take us to uh, Shinagawa. However, the traffic is unusually heavy. The driver says it's never been this bad before. There must be an obstruction up ahead, an accident or something. That's the only explanation I can think of. We've made it out of Akiba, but at this rate it will take forever to reach Shinagawa. I considered getting off here and taking the train, but then I remembered what happened at Shin Ochonomizu Station. I have a bad feeling about this. 
The traffic jam could be certain to doing. I look out the window and scan the crowd for anyone who might be a certain agent. Three hours later, we're still stuck. According to a conversation I overheard between our driver and another driver, there's some kind of inspection up ahead. Furthermore, it doesn't seem to be a police inspection, and a small fight broke out at the inspection site or something. To make matters worse, this road has already been closed off, and all the cars behind us are being detoured. There are only about 100 cars waiting, but the inspection has been at a standstill for three hours. This can't be a coincidence. Once again, I feel the malice of fate, manipulating the situation. Is Mayori going to die again? If I'd known it was going to turn out like this, I'd have ditched the taxi hours ago. It's not too late. I should pay the driver and get off right. There it is. Just then, someone knocks on the window. Our taxi is stopped in the middle of the road. What's going on? I look over, but before I can say anything, a man opens the rear door and gets in next to Mayori. He's holding a knife. Another assassin! Before she can reply, the man covers Mayori's mouth with a large, meaty hand. I try to open my door, but it's locked. Only the driver can open it from the inside. Oh, wow. Mayori opens her eyes wide. Her body twitches. It all happens too fast. The man sinks his knife into Mayori's chest. A bright red spot stains her clothes. Jesus! That died- That happened differently as well. I'm pretty sure, anyway. When they got in a taxi in the show, she wasn't stabbed. She was shot. They knocked on the window and then shot her. I think, anyway. Yeah, I'm certain that's what happened. Wow. What a name. Man who stabbed Mayori. Another man, uh oh. Another man gets into the passenger seat. He points a gun at the driver and says, and says something to him. Strength drains from Mayori's body. Her eyes slowly close. A tear rolls down her cheek. I watch her die inches away, powerless to stop it. I can feel her last breath against my skin. They killed her again. Why? Why? Why can't I save her? Why won't you let me save her? Who decided that Mayori must die? Moika? Cern? Or... Does the world itself wish that wish for Mayori's death? I won't accept that. I clench my jaw and throw myself forward, driving my forehead into the killer's nose. Oh, nice. He falls back, I shout to the driver. Uh, okay. Crawl out of the taxi and take off running through the traffic jam. After running for hours, I make it back to the lab. Luckily, the time loop machine is still there. I have to leap again. Oh god. So at this point we've seen Mayori die like six times now. And the time is... Alright, three o'clock again. Or oh, four o'clock. Every time we run, Mayori dies. Six hours into the past, I clutch my head and break my brain for an answer. I feel like I've hit a dead end. What do I do if we can't run away? Is there no way to save her? Oh dear. Mayuri's blank stare is the only answer I get. Ugh. Run. This time I take her to the closest police station and beg, beg them to protect her. When asked why, I explain that someone is going to kill Mayuri six hours from now, but without any proof that there's someone after her, they have no choice but to turn us away. Well. It's past six by the time till by the time we leave the station. And we're left with no choice but to keep running. Oh god. I wish I, that I could blame my previous failures on bad luck. We could try Ochinomizu or Shino Shinbashi again. And maybe this time she won't die. But I don't have the courage to try those routes again. At the same time, we can't stay in Akiba. We're running out of options. Subways, trains and taxis, all out. Attempting escape by those means will get Mayori killed, so my heart tells me. Perhaps the fear is irrational, but I can't put it out of my mind. I've seen her die a half dozen times already. Shot, stabbed, torn to pieces. I can't go through that again. We take refuge in... Yodobashi camera. camera. I thought we could keep hiding there indefinitely, but just after seven we hear an explosion in front of the station. Yodobashi goes into chaos. Policemen appear and start evacuating the star. When I try to explain our situation, an officer shouts terrorist and pulls his gun. This can't be happening. This isn't America. Japanese police officers don't shoot without 
uh, without provocation. Mayori dies. Really? It happened so fast. The policeman shoots her right in the head. I don't know if he was real policeman... If he was a real policeman or an assassin in disguise. It doesn't matter. I can't deny it any longer. The world itself is killing Mayori. And back we go! How far back this time? Is it going to be past three? No, oh, yeah. Half two now. Ah, oh, Jesus. This time I don't leap into action immediately. Instead, I sit on the couch and collect my thoughts. Every time I try to save Mayori, it ends in the worst possible way. To make matters worse, I no longer even know what I'm supposed to be saving her from. Cause and effect? Why does Mayori die? At first, I thought that it was Moaka and her hit squad, sent by CERN to steal our time machine. But as I leapt back in time again and again, the cause of Mayori's death kept changing. At Shin Ochinomizu station, she died because N Nai pushed her off the platform. CERN had nothing to do with that, it was an accident. Each time I leap, she dies a different way. What does that mean? I've been thinking for an hour, but I'm no closer to an answer. I want someone to tell me, but who can I ask? I'm the only person in history to leap through time. No, there's one more. John Titer. But he's not replying to my emails anymore, and he hasn't posted on at channel in days. I'm not even convinced he's a real time traveler. I decided not to run this time. Instead, I take a different approach. Strike first. I send Mobika an email. I need to talk to you about our time machine. Meet me alone. I designate the roof of Radikan as our meeting place. Two weeks have passed since the satellite crashed, but it's still there and the building's still closed. At least the security has lessened, so it's easy for me, for me to sneak in. Not that there's any sneaking to do, I just walk in through the front door like I belong there. No one questions me. Last time I came here was for Dr. Nakabachi's presentation. Of course, on this world line, the presentation was cancelled. Naturally, there's nobody here but me. It occurs to me that this is a dangerous gambit. Momoka might have a gun, and I already know that she that she's willing to use it. But then I don't intend to play, play fair either. We're supposed to meet at 5.30, it's just after 5. I came early in order to ambush her. I hide in the shadows and wait, for, and wait with bated breath. But 30 minutes later I hear the door open. Momoka makes her entrance, alone. She looks around restlessly. She still hasn't noticed me. I take a gun out of my shirt. It's not real. It's future gadget number one, the bit particle gun. <laughs> really? It's just a toy ray gun with a remote control attached. Obviously a bluff, but all I could prepare on such short notice. I run up behind Moaka and shove the bit particle gun into her back. But <laughs> don't move. <laughs> okay. It's a threat. Hands out where I can see him. <laughs> Just like a Hollywood movie. But this isn't a movie. This is real. And she isn't an actress. She's a murderer. After Moka raises her hands, I feel through her clothes. Sure enough, she's carrying a gun. I take it from her and press it to Moka's back in place of the bit particle gun. My frustration and rage boil over. Because of her. Because of her, Mayori. I've lost count of I've lost count of how many times exactly. And I haven't slept at all that entire time. Strangely, I'm not tired at all. Moeka gasps. So it was their doing. Oh, 
前が眉毛を殺すこともだ私は理解したか俺がタイムリーバーだと Moaka nods faintly. I could kill her now. It would be easy. But no, I need information. Rounders. Moka answers with surprising obedience. I guess she values her own life, even though she has no problem deriving at uh, depriving people, or deriving other people, depriving other people of theirs. God, I can't read. Sheesh. Rounder. Rounder. <laughs> いったいどういう組織なんだセルントの関係性はメールでダメだ行動で説明しろランダーはセルントは別組織公の傭兵部隊か違うIPN5100その 情報収集と回収のため世界中に散らばってそれを集める IBN 5100s That's right, when I met her she was looking for an IBN 5100 These days they're nearly impossible to find People will pay millions just to own one Is that because Sen has been hunting them down? So she's not important enough to be told. Moka doesn't answer. Matona is sarcastic, but Moe cannot. Damn, she's useless. Did you know too much? So what we know? So CERN did know about the hacking. That's why we have a direct line, I would say. They want our time machine. Sen must be trying to monopolize time travel technology. Oh, go public! Uh, so going public was the reason. How the fuck do they know? That's what, exactly what I just said. Yeah, how would they know that? We only said it in secret. The only people that would know we were going public would be Mayori, Kurisu, and Daru. Okabe, of course, but we play as him so he don't count. How does she know that? We made that decision right after, ti after the time leap machine was completed. That was only a few hours ago. She's not important. Yep. Unnecessary. I nearly pulled the trigger. Oh. 
All on you, a little obedient soldier. Live and die for certain. No, oh, for FB. Yeah, of course. FB? Is that the name of her supervisor? Nope. John Titer. Me? I dug the gun into my wicker's back. Mocha shakes her head. I can't do it. I'm not a killer. My hands are trembling, just like Moika's were before she shot Mayori. She was hesitating. She didn't want to pull the trigger. But she did. Moka shakes her head again. Something hard stabs into my back. A chill runs through my body. There's someone behind me. Uh oh. A man's voice. Is he with Moaka? I'm ready to pull the trigger in cold blood. Moaka doesn't answer. <laughs> 